Good day everyone, uh, welcome to Double Out Days. For those of you who are new to this channel, please subscribe and click the bell icon to receive notifications. And if you have not yet, go and watch the Question Everything series as well as the Moments in Time series. You will find those in the playlist on the channel. Now in today's news, there's something very important that I want to discuss with you. And this news has been coming out over a period of time. It was conceived in 2017, became an act in 2018, and now finally in 2021, the 1st of April, this will come into law. And this is around political party funding. And I want to discuss this with you in detail. This is vital for you to understand the, the fake narrative that is being spread around us. In other words, everyone's saying, oh, this is wonderful for the democracy, a democracy that we don't have, and how this is transparent. And I'll explain to you how you've been fooled into believing that all of a sudden our current system is better. When actually what's been done is quite the blanche has now been given via an equity system for anyone to donate towards a pool of funds that can be used equitably among the political parties, only those that are currently in power, not those that are trying to rise up and maybe do something from scratch. So what it will do is strengthen those already in power. And the other thing that it will do is those people that are contributing towards this, this combined fund do not have to disclose their identity. And this is where it gets really interesting. So there's two articles that I'll link in the description below this video. It's going to take a bit of time, but this is very important for you to understand. If you want to be a citizen, I want you to understand the subversion that is taking place here. Extreme subversion. And I'll do one article from, um, from the Mail and Guardian that was written by one of the... Uh, one of their writers and they say that this is a sponsored story so they don't actually reveal exactly who it's sponsored by but the person that wrote this article dr paul kariuki is the executive director of the D democracy development program and he writes in his personal capacity but once again the story is sponsored which means it's being promoted and the headline says why political party funding bill coming into effect is good for our democracy and the other article that I'll very briefly cover is a political party funding act to be effected from April. So that is April 1st and they wanted to get it into place before the, the local government elections. But here's the catch. So Maposa has been postponing and postponing this and many organizations have been complaining because there was an investigation into his uh, CR17 campaign that raised over a billion rand in funding for him to be elected at the end of the day a billion rand that is a th that is literally a thousand million so i mean to just wrap your head around that and actually understand what that means in political terms is is unprecedented it's never happened in the history of our country so i first want to cover the enca article with the headline political party funding act to be effected from april before i i read the article and discuss the article written uh, by dr paul kariuki and it's important for you to understand what is happening here vital in fact so in the NCA article, they have this picture, and like I say in the description below the video, you can find the links, you can, go, you can go and read the articles yourself. It shows you all the parties that are represented in parliament, provincial parliament, and local government at various levels. And it says your President Saul Maposa announced on Friday that the political party funding act will come into effect from 1st of April. According to a statement issued by the presidency, the act establishes funds to provide political parties represented in parliament and legislatures with funding to undertake their work in other words other people can fund them to do their work which is fine i mean political parties should be able to get funding uh, to do their work and they should be able to campaign for that any movement or organization should be able to do that there's one problem here what is not stated is that taxpayers are also funding these parties besides this I believe that this is the only way a political party should be allowed to raise funds is to ask people for funds and people must be willing to donate 
And then they must be transparent about this. Now, this act is an offshoot of a Concord case where the case was won and the Concord ordered that an act needs to come into force and they gave government a certain period of time within which to do this to say that political parties need to disclose their funding. So, um, according to a statement issued by the presidency, they say the act establishes funds to provide political parties represented in parliament and legislatures with funding to undertake their work. It also requires that donations be disclosed by parties and donors to the Independent Electoral Commission, the IEC. The problem here is what they don't say is that it's if it's above 100,000 Rand. So, donations below 100,000 Rand does not have to be disclosed to the public and this is problematic. It prohibits donations to parties by foreign governments or agencies, foreign persons or entities, organs of state or state-owned enterprises. Those are all obvious. Uh, and the fact that this wasn't obvious before should be a grave concern to you. Parties may however receive funding from foreign entities for training, skills development or policy development. This means a foreign entity can come and say, I want you to develop this policy. I will fund you if you develop this policy. Now, how do they monitor what the party is actually using the funding for? But what this means is it's still open to bribery and corruption. No member of a political party may receive a donation other than for political party purposes. Now, what is that? What does a member of a political party consider to be political party purposes? Them having a lack of time on a holiday and uh, cajoling with some um, foreign country's ambassador. Um, it could be many things that they consider good for their political party. Uh, and, you know, this is, this is where all of this falls flat. So it looks wonderful on the surface. But this is why I'm trying to show you the rot in what they are speaking about here. So they say no member of a political party may receive a donation other than for political party purposes. Now what does that mean? I have given cash donations to people in the past. What do they do with that money? I trusted them to use it in good stead. But there is no way that anyone can regulate or see how those funds are spent or whether the party even knows that they received it. The move is intended to reinforce initiatives like the online publication of government-related COVID-19 procurement contracts. Then President Ramaphosa commends in the Independent Electoral Commission, the Department of Home Affairs, MPs, leaders of political parties and other stakeholders for the extensive preparatory work required to bring this legislation into operation, the statement read. I can tell you now, this, this, this article is just about finished that no political party will be happy with this if it did not benefit them. Those that are currently in a seat in parliament or in a provincial parliament or in a local council. So the fact that they all agreed with this means they're benefiting from this. This is not a stab in the back at all. Let me continue. Ramaphosa also called on political parties to work together and with the IEC to ensure the effective implementation of this law. Now, this is where it becomes very, very interesting. If you see the perspective that's been put out here, and this is, like I said, in the Mail and Guardian, and this is a sponsored story by Dr. Paul Kariuki, who is the executive director of the Democracy Development Program, the DDP, and writes in his personal capacity. Now, let's listen to this. Fascinating. It's a new dawn for South Africa. President Cyril Ramaphosa recently announced the implementation of the Political Party Funding Act of 2018, Act Number 6 of 2018. Now it's taken almost three years to get this anywhere. This is absolutely shocking, and they say this commences from April 1st. It is like an April, April Fool's joke, absolutely. The Act now makes it possible to know the sources of funding by political parties, it should be two political parties, and this will go a long way to strengthen public confidence in South Africa's democratic political processes. He is saying what it will do. Uh, and I find this interesting. So this is forced mentality. Someone actually saying how it will make people feel without them even considering it.
Furthermore, by regulating private and public funding of political parties, the Act provides citizens with an opportunity to hold political parties accountable. You can only do that if you are and behave like a citizen, because most of us behave like subjects. But let me continue. Hence, improving transparency. So they're saying that this will make things more transparent. I can show you so many ways where this will be less transparent because they actually went and built in a workaround and this is based on what they call equity in other words you can now as a foreign entity whoever donate funds to a common fund that will fund any political party that has a seat not any of the others and that will be equitably distributed which means that now you can fund as much as you want apply not for you to be disclosed under this act which means now they've opened a new door that didn't exist before for the ruling party and the larger parties to receive unknown amounts of funding and the IEC can decide whether it will be disclosed or not and the big problem here is Cyril Ramaphosa the president decides who the head of the chapter 9 institutions are including the IEC and this is a conflict of interest and a huge problem furthermore by regulating private and public funding of political parties the act provides citizens with an opportunity to hold political parties accountable hence improving transparency but why is implementation of the act good news for democracy so he believes that this is democracy in action firstly we may recall that last year the public protector instituted a court case against president Cyril Maposa whose campaign allegedly raised more than 1 billion the sources of the funds were unknown and suddenly became a subject for scrutiny and Cyril covered this up hook line and sinker he wanted to make sure that he's got the largest bulldozer to cover this mess amid allegations that the sponsors may expect favors in return please people we are humans we are not idiots and anyone that knows that a billion has been funded to get Cyril elected knows that they want him to do specific things I speak about this at length in my meetings it is such scenarios that the act seeks to prevent so that transparency and public accountability is improved thereby promoting citizens confidence in politics well citizens confidence in politics and the current system has gone to an all-time low and this is why more than 50 percent of eligible voters decided not to vote in the last national elections when more than 70 percent of eligible voters voted in 1994 this is more than a 20 percent decline it is huge it tells you a lot about the system failure and the system was designed to fail he carries on secondly the legislation closes the door on corruption and an anonymity of private funders this is not true you don't have to disclose who you are the party doesn't have to disclose any funders under 100,000 rand to the public now this is a problem once again whose interests are often unknown to the public well this is why we are trying to expose the fact that the party system has to fall what this person here is trying to do this doctor he's trying to say that checks and balances are being put in place to validate the party system that the party system can still continue and I completely disagree with him and for good reason if left unchecked undisclosed funding can be a threat to any democracy yeah right i mean it's been carrying on forever and my lead may lead has led to political turmoil as parties scramble for funding with the enactment of the act such threats will not be a concern as regulation of funding is enforced the regulations they are not publishing here you have to read the regulations to understand what a farce it is and i've spoken about this before this is to make people think that it is now controlled i want you to go to the iec website and actually find the new regulations and read them and i will cover them in a video specifically but i want you to read them so that you can become a citizen knowing what's actually happening behind the scenes he says here thirdly funders interests will be laid bare for public scrutiny as sources of funding from donors are disclosed once again if it's under 100,000 rand, it does not have to be disclosed to the public. And this should be challenged in the Concord, and the Concord will hopefully rule 
against what the act has become, an absolute farce. This public scrutiny is important for strengthening democracy as citizens examine the interests of the funders and question anything that is not aligned with national interests. That aims at promoting the well-being of all and not of the political party receiving the donation. Now people, this is the whole point of political parties. Subversion. Doing what the funders want them to do. So, this act is an eye blind. Absolutely. An informed citizenry is well positioned to hold political candidates accountable pre and post an election to ensure no favors are extended to the donors at the expense of a hard won democracy. While we haven't won any democracy, this is why we need to liberate South Africa from its oppressors, from this oppressive party system. And this person trying to make as if this is going to make a big difference, he doesn't, well maybe he does understand how the party system is meant for gangsters. I mean, this is a gang system and it's a kind of system that makes it impossible for normal citizens to be citizens you will always remain a subject under the system. Fourth, there is a high possibility that through the legislation, smaller political parties will be included in sharing of the funding. They say a high possibility that through the legislation, this is not the case. Only those elected. New political parties stand no chance now because they are getting none of the funding from government, from the taxpayers. And that's how it should be. None of these parties should get any funding from taxpayers at all. And then you can say it's a level playing field. They, he says, yeah, this way these smaller parties have access to financial resources to facilitate their campaigning and other relevant party operational errands. And they are more cushioned against the dominance of bigger and more established political parties. This is utter nonsense because if you have this fund where people can just pull money into and you can decide to, dis to, to withhold your, um, who you are, then, and it's a equitable, they call equity that the largest party gets the most money. How on earth does that make sure that smaller parties get more funding? They might get more funding, but if the larger parties get proportionally a lot more than that, then what is the point? There is absolutely no point. In fact, this act will make sure that the larger parties get more funding than ever before. This is what it's ensuring. He says this way, these smaller parties have access to financial resources to facilitate the campaigning and other relevant errands and that they will be protected against the dominance of bigger and more established political parties. That is absolutely not the case. In conclusion, the enactment of the act is a win for democracy in South Africa. So he's trying to convince us that this makes us a democracy. The benefits far outweigh costs of non-disclosure of private funding. That is an oxymoron. However, its success will depend on its implementation to the letter. Please. <laughs> this is a joke, right? It is now incumbent upon political parties, the legislature and electoral commission to see that the act is properly implemented come April 1st. In the meantime, civil society and other non-state actions should play a vigilant role of holding political parties accountable and remaining transparent in the disclosure of private funding. Please, these people are well trained in thieving and stealing. This is, has become their mainstay and I include all political parties represented in Parliament in this. If you are not fighting for the full change of the electoral system, you are a part of the problem. Everything this doctor is speaking about is a part of the problem. And for them to say that we are now uh, a democracy or more democratic because of this is an absolute farce. I will deal with you in a future video with the exact uh, legislation that's been laid out. I will deal with you all the pitfalls in there, all the things that they are not highlighting, that is undemocratic, that empowers larger power parties and makes it less democratic. I'm not saying that the way it was wasn't undemocratic to begin with. This is proven in these articles because they are trying to say that we will now be a democracy because of this. 
This is not true. We are not a democracy. We won't be a democracy until we elect independent people to become our candidates. And those people will raise their own funds on their own. And then you will have to look out and see, educate yourself who you want to vote for, what they stand for, what they represent. And if they represent the battle of good versus evil, and they're on the side of good. In other words, they believe in individual liberty and won't give up that freedom for the greater good of mankind. You can support that person, especially if they believe in the same values that you believe in. But for now, no one knows what these political parties stand for because they are campaigning for funds to keep their pockets full. They actually don't care what happens to you at the end of the day, as long as they stay in office. And we are changing that one person at a time. I really want to thank you for watching this video. Please look out for the video where I actually look at this new electoral act and I lay bare all the flaws in that. Please uh, help support this channel to continue. You can look at the WODS Capitec bank account in the description below the video. Thank you to all of the people that are making this possible for me to make these videos on the road while we are touring and having these meetings. And I want to thank everyone that's helped with the tour and that are fighting a fight for freedom, for individual liberty over the greater good of mankind. I thank you very much till the next video.